have reached rest grace with rwgresearch.com. Open dash source dash energy. Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Russ with rwgresearch.com as well as quantumgravityresearch.org. Today, we're going to be playing with the magnetizer. Yes, the magnetizer. I have been trying to get to a project for a while now, and today is the day we're finally going to get to it. And I was going to move this trash can earlier, and I forgot. So I'll do it now. Okay, so what are we going to do today? Um, I'm basically going to be magnetizing some ring magnets. And these little guys um, look like this. And I will explain to you exactly what we're trying to do here. So a gentleman, okay, his YouTube username is pretty cool. I like it. It's wood, uh, wood, glass, and brass. Or wood, brass, and glass. Or glass, brass, and wood. One of those three. Whoa. Whoa! <laughs> uh, so what is your channel name? Wood, brass, and glass. See, I told you I couldn't remember it. I had to come all the way here into this strange place and ask the person in person. What do you think about that? This is... Wood, brass, and glass. Yeah, see? Isaiah, and uh, this is what I'm going to be working on in this video, so stay tuned for awesome stuff. And uh, I highly recommend you go check out his channel, especially if you're interested in the alternative energy stuff, and he also posts some interesting other videos. He's been trying to work on replicating um, some ring magnets for the Searle effect generator. Now, this gentleman has put a lot, a lot of time and effort into actually getting a full replication built. I really recommend you go check it out. Um, his name is Isaiah, and uh, I'll leave his last name out in case he doesn't want me to share that, but you can probably find it if you really, really want to know. And me and him discussed for a while now how we think we could potentially make this work. So what we did is we actually created an idea to be using these type of forms Okay, and these type of forms are something that we thought up. So here we have a copper piece and a metal piece that's going to act as a fo focusing core. And then on top of there we also have a slanted piece of copper that's going to act as a, a cancellation device to try to direct the flux and do a different direction. So let me get you some close-ups of these so you can see. Alright, so as you can see here there's different versions of this and uh, Oh, the other one's in here. So there's different versions of this. The first version is basically a, a squirrely, wibbly, wobbly thing, Bob, just to see of what we can come up with. Same thing on the other half. This was the original idea, and um, then we decided to go ahead and try to make a second one of these with just a skewed angle only. So it, I'm not going to give you the science behind the Searle effect generator and the idea, but the end result is creating some type of a wave on the magnet. So a higher and lower potential of magnetism as the actual wave creates. It's, it's not just the magnetism but the strength of the magnetism according to where the the wave is at on the magnet. So these little ring magnets um, he, uh, Isaiah sent to me and these were magnetized and in the next clip right now I'm actually going to show you how I unmagnetize them. So let's actually have a look at that first. Okay so what we're going to do right now is we're going to take these magnets and we're going to demagnetize them by sticking them in the vacuum oven and uh, bringing them up to their Curie temperature and that will release the uh, atomic alignment inside of these magnets and then we will have unmagnetized magnets that we can remagnetize. So that's the goal of this step. Okay, so that's the process I took to unmagnetize these. Now we're going to remagnetize these using these jigs. So here's the idea. Um, the potential interesting thing here is what kind of shielding material can we come up with that will shield the magnetic fielding inside of this big magnetizing coil. 
So this magnetizing coil is hooked up to this magnetizer you see right behind it. And we're going to be pumping thousands of amps through this coil and we're going to be trying to magnetize these magnets. So the idea was materials we thought would work was one of them was copper and it's relatively cheap. There's a few other ones that were way more expensive. We decided to try copper. So Isaiah made these from scratch. So here we've got this jig of which we put a magnet in there. I'm actually going to get a smaller one like this one. All right, this magnet goes inside of there, sits against there, put the top half on there. These are marked so that the alignment of the skewed angle are all the same, they're all correct. And then lastly, pop in the core. And this is, again, the idea here is to create a magnetic flux line dedicated to forming right here where we want it, right at this ring. And we want it to be stronger here and less stronger here. Now, copper is not really a shielding material, but it's a, it's a deflecting material, so it's going to want to try to deflect it. We weren't for sure if that was going to even work at all. But like any other good experiment, you have to try it and find out for sure. So this is the whole jig with, of course, the magnet inside of here. And everything else is surrounded by copper. Okay, and this whole entire guy fits right inside here, and we're going to try to magnetize it. So that's the principle. That's what we're trying to do. And I'm just going to try different voltages, different currents. We're going to find out exactly what we can do here. And hopefully, potentially, we can, uh, we can magnetize some ring magnets in a funky fashion of which we're trying to do. Okay, so I took one single individual magnet and decided not to unmagnetize it so that we can find out exactly what this looks like. So if we look at it under some viewing film here, we can see it's just a regular magnet that's magnetized through the thickness or through, the, through this way north and south, one on each side, straight down the middle. So that's what, that's what an, an original one looks like. And I'm going to go ahead and roll it across the sheet so we can see what kind of potential we have. Okay, you can see that it's a pretty straight path. There's no, there's no fluctuations. Okay, what we're trying to do is look for, for something that, that has the pattern where you can see the left and right. I'll do it one more time, see if I can get it a little better. There you go. So it's a pretty, pretty straight pattern. There is no, uh, there is no difference there. Pretty even all the way across. So let's magnetize some of these and see what happens. All right, we're going to actually start out at about. 250 volts, really low magnetization. I've already done a do. I've already done a few pre-tests, and it appears that a thousand volts is way too much. So we're going to start pretty low. Okay, we're going to hold it at about 150. I mean, excuse me, 250, and charge it up. This right here is going to show us how much current we've discharged. This here is our voltage, DC voltage on our capacitors. This is also our DC voltage on our capacitors. This is the discharge button, but I happen to have a button on the floor with my foot, so I'm going to use it. And uh, let's grab the safety glasses in case uh, things go flying around the room. And uh, hopefully the whole entire thing doesn't shoot out of there like a bullet. So, here we go. Testing in three, two, one. All right, 750 amps. Pretty straightforward. Let's uh, see what our magnetization looks like. All right, I put this tape on here so I could pull it out. It's a bit hard to get in and out without it. Quick test, does not appear like it's magnetized at all. So let's go ahead and, uh, and look on our viewing film. All right, so according to our viewing film, go ahead and get a side shot here. It appears we can at least see something there, a tiny little bit. You can see it's a little bit stronger on this side. 
I'll flip it over about the same. And it almost has an equal strength on the bottom. So, can't even wipe the, uh, wipe the paths clean on here. I'm going to have to do that with a different magnet. Go ahead and roll this guy and see what we get. It's hard to see. There is a tiny little magnetization path there. It's really small. But it is there. So we'll do the next one at about 100 volts higher. All right, 350, three, two, one. All right, that was about a thousand amps, 1,020 amps. See what it looks like. All right, let's see what it looks like. So it appears like there's a dip here and here, but it is very, very, very hard to see if there's a dip there. Here, here, maybe there. Very difficult to see. The other method is wrap this guy around here and check it. And by doing that, you might be able to see a skewed angle, but I don't even think that I can see that. So it's, it's very, very difficult to see. All right, this is 500 volts. See where we're at. Three, two, one. 1.44 kiloamps. Doesn't appear to be much change at all. Okay, 1500 volt. In three, two, one. 4.3 thousand amps. I think uh, we may have busted it. Didn't sound real good. Let's have a look. If the magnet moves too much in there, I broke the bottom of the tape. Oh, look at that. Broke the... Uh, it's all fine, but we broke the uh, copper ring off of <laughs> off that. That's not so good. There you can see. It's a nice, good, straight path. I don't even see any deviation at all. So, potentially, absolutely no good. I almost wonder if the magnet needs to be thicker, as in tall-wise. Okay, so here we are. What do we do next? Um, I've managed to break this. I actually knew that this may happen. And what actually happened was these rings are a little bit thicker than the original designed rings for some reason that they're different sizes. I'm not sure why. There's, they're the same thing, but they're different sizes. And so what happened was there wasn't enough space in here. Everything got smashed together and it literally just sheared the copper right off of our of our jig and that's uh, that was sort of to be expected so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a tiny little rubber thing or just something inside of the copper ring here to use these next set of jigs so that I can use these uh, bigger thicker taller magnets now the first version here uh, it appears that one of two things one the copper is not doing what we think which is very likely or two we need a, a taller ring magnet to make a more defined path. I, I think actually the copper is not really doing its job. So we may be able to use a different material. And um, I tested a lot of materials a while back. That's why we ended up with copper because copper actually was showing positive results. So I don't know. All I can tell you is we're going to try the same thing with these uh, very odd looking and uh, portions of copper here. We're going to see if we can see any potential difference whatsoever. So, let's run those. Time for a little lapsing of the timeth. Very odds going on. Let's get started. OK, 
Okay, well, we did what we did and we just did it and now we're going to check it. Now, here's what I already did. I already checked it. So I'm just going to show you the good results <laughs> instead of wasting all of your time. Okay, I shouldn't say wasting, but these videos take a lot of time, I understand. So here's the deal. Um, I did this again in three different increments. I'm going to do the one and show you the one that worked the best, which was 350 volts. 1 kiloamps. So if I roll this guy and roll it down this way, it's very difficult to see. Okay, so you can clearly see on this track, you can see a, let me maybe put it this way, you can clearly see a wobble here and here that represents our wobble. Okay, if I do the, the higher power one, you can see there's, there's no wobble there, none at all. It's just a straight a straight path. So we're going to try this a slightly differently without the copper and just see what happens. All right, we're actually going to try this one tip to tip. So copper wedge to copper wedge, high to side to high side, low side to low side. See how that works. 500 volts seems to be, or 350 seems like a good number. Everything else is too saturated. Alright, so I've messed with this thing for a while now, and it appears that this does work, which is good. However, I took the copper off the squiggly ones just to see potentially what would happen. And so let me give you a little close-up. All right, at the right voltage current charge level, you can clearly see, well, clearly when it focuses, you can clearly see right there the magnetic um, lines and how they, how they had fixed themselves to the, uh, the peaks and valleys of this. So let me rotate this. What I did is I aligned the magnet up with this point so I can see what's going on. And then you can clearly see, all right, on the edge of the magnet, you can see where the points are because this has a slight magnetism left in it. You can clearly see that those peaks and valleys match up to the peaks and valleys on the magnet. So if I, if I show you where the peak is right there, you can let me see, get that one right there. See that? If I take this off, that peak is still there. I know it's really hard to see, but you see the angled line there? And if I put this back on, which is kind of difficult to do, and I got it lined up, it happens to match exactly with where that, not like that, it matches exactly all the way around those, those peaks and valleys of the, of the magnet and uh, core hard to see but exactly where we want it to be so if we want to roll this guy show you exactly what it looks like indeed we have this wiggly squiggly little pattern it is not much but it is there and because this is so thin if it were thicker I think we would definitely totally see this pretty clear but because it's so thin uh, I think we need thicker rings to do this properly because it's it's uh, if you put too much power into it, it doesn't work it just saturates the entire thing and you don't get the pattern you're looking for so there's something definitely here but I think the fine-tuning parameters are going to be important okay so I did notice one thing and that is if I attach this to something like this round object and I and I let it sit you can see there's like these little magnetic points okay where it wants to it wants to try to sit like right there there's a pretty tough little point so if I just rotate this you can see there's eventually it'll get to a point right there so that point is actually magnetized more than the rest of it because it sticks on that point it always sticks on the same point so if I find that point, appears to be right there, okay, and I show you what it looks like on the magnetic viewing film, 
it happens to be a little peak right there. I know it's hard to see, but there is a little peak right there on the tip. So that, that shows that the concentration of magnetic flux was higher in that point than the rest of it. So that's also a, a side note here to, to, be, to be looking at. Now, I'm not going to get the Gauss meter up. I'm going to send these back to Isaiah, and I'm going to have him analyze them the way he wishes to. Um, I can already tell you, just by floating them around a, a, me, a, a metallic object, how they stick. There's a higher flux density and a lower flux density. So, so there you go. Okay, well, I'm back with Isaiah. Welcome back to Isaiah's shop, uh, wood, brass, and glass. And uh, I've magnetized these in this video. You've watched this. He actually hasn't really seen that footage at all, so it's kind of fun for him. Um, he'll get to see it later. But I put these rings in here and I brought them with me and uh, Isaiah's been looking them over, checking them out. And it seems like the low voltage ones are the only ones that really have done what they're supposed to do to a potential. But then like the really low voltage ones, which I didn't even check this in my video, we did this while we were here, they're almost not even able to stick to this. Yeah, they can't hold their own weight. And that's a problem, right? That's, mm -hmm. a, that's an issue. That, that, that means that, yeah, sure, you can put a ring, funky-looking magnetization pattern on there, but if it has no potential, it's not It's just good. a pretty magnet. <laughs> it's a pretty piece of metal almost. That, yeah. one, that one's not even a magnet. <laughs> so like the 300 volt, let's see where I'm at. It doesn't really matter, I guess. But like the 300 volt, it, it's, 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 it's okay. Mm -hmm. But when you get like the original one, which is over here, I believe, one of them. That guy, that guy's like. Yeah, that that sticks pretty good. I mean, it, it's like almost can hold that core. Almost like there you go. So I, this is my viewpoint. I think what's happening here, what we want to do is, um, because these guys, we tried to use the copper as some sort of deflecting or canceling or something. Right. It just didn't seem to work quite how I envisioned it, even though I did some testing with copper previously. It, it's, it must be a little different. So what's happening, I think, is that when a magnet is this close to the core, um, this big iron block creates a pretty big magnetic field and it sort of just overrides what we have here. It just overrides, it doesn't even care. And so I think what we need to do is either create a pipe with just the, the deflections that we want to see in the magnet, like this, so the pipe would actually be relatively long, maybe even over a foot, and put a coil here and a coil there and shoot flux from a far distance through a small channel into the ring magnet. I have a feeling that that's what we want to do. And so uh, whoever you or I or both can combination, whatever, whatever the future holds, we'll be running experiments similar to that to see if we can get these ring magnets to do what we want. That'd make a lot of sense to me because you wouldn't be working with all this area that would be giving, giving just the random, or the random, the normal field. You'd be working only with the area that gives the imprint, which is exactly what we want to do, uh, especially for a the, the device I'm working with, I really want to go for a field that's similar to, to this design. Uh, but as you can see, this mass amount is basically influencing the rest of the magnet, and these are become irrelevant. Yeah, um, because it, because what I did is I did multiple voltages, as you saw, and the lower the voltage, the lower magnetic potential, but the better you can visualize what I'm trying to do here. So that means that the the flux wasn't strong enough to saturate this big iron piece, and sort of just only saturated the edges, which is, I think, what we want. Exactly. And it's almost as if the shielding material didn't even help. The copper pieces I put on here, I did some with and without. It almost, in the in this case, it almost didn't matter. Hmm. So, more testing on that, but yeah. in the meantime, uh, I made a video, and I'll be posting it, or I already did one of the two, of this. This is ridiculous. <laughs> it is. <laughs> and so definitely go check out that video and definitely go check out his channel. Um, you built this like a year ago, right? Oh, or no. Even longer? It's been sitting for about a year, unfortunately. Oh, okay. Uh, I started this in 2008. And uh, I built this, I think, about, finished up maybe two, three years ago. And I haven't really made a whole lot of progress. Uh, but that's going to be changing soon. There's more things coming.
No worries. That everything, every good thing takes time, especially when it's a hobby. Yeah, it is a hobby <laughs> for so, now. <laughs> so anyway, go check it out. Thumbs up, everybody. If you liked it, if you didn't, doesn't really matter because, well, I don't care. <laughs> and I'll probably remove that snippet. All right, well, I'm sure that I've made this video a lot longer than it should have been, but uh, you know, that's how research goes. Add in there what you want. I've managed to uh, fill the table up back here with all sorts of uh, different magnetizing sessions and uh, with the copper, without copper, some spacing, no spacing, different jigs and uh, and that's that. So that's all I got for you. Hope you guys have a good day. God bless you. Do what you can. Help others where you can. That's what I'm doing right now is I'm trying to help Isaiah out and uh, I think you should do the same thing. If you see somebody that can use help and you've got the technical reasons to do it then uh, try your best to do it. I understand uh, time is limited for most people, which is why it took me like months to get this done. So, peace out. Have a good day. Bye.